What's up guys, J.R. Raymond back again coming to you from home where we're going to discuss the cheetah pattern, those shorter patterns, and we're going to break down a little bit why some of these guys play the lanes the way they do. Why were those guys playing the lanes with such big angles heading towards the gutter uh, and one of the guys was playing up the lane? What's the best way to play this type of a pattern? We're going to discuss all that stuff here in a minute, so stay tuned. Real quick before we get going, I want you guys to make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. It seems to be like the notifications aren't working. I'm getting a lot of people saying they're seeing my videos like three or four days after they've been posted. I'm not sure what's going on, but make sure to hit that like and notification bell so that way you start seeing the videos more. It helps the algorithm to push it out there a little bit better. So just uh, try to do that for me. Thanks. All right, so let's break this down a little bit. Here you can watch AJ playing from a deeper part of the lane, throwing it at the gutter. And the reason why you're seeing him throw it at the gutter like that is because that's where the friction is. And honestly, there's friction all over the lane. But you've got to get the ball further right to give it enough time to get back to the pocket because of how much friction. So let me pause it here. Now, Randy's showing you how these guys are choosing to play the lanes. You can see they're trying to get it as close to the gutter as they can because that's where we know the ball is going to hook, obviously, unless you throw it in the gutter. So let's take a look here. For the right handers, obviously, red for Jacob Butcher, our lone lefty, and, and that could spell trouble for the rest of the field tonight as Jacob is out there. Out there so we can watch by all by himself. Jacob here throws it dang near to the gutter. Right, a gutter ball and then a foul. Wow, wow. He fouled. Right, and then look right, at so this one. Gonna regroup here. And just get set. Now you look at this shot, it doesn't get to the gutter. This one gets to probably four or five down lane, and it just overhooks through the face. That still looks like it's pretty far left, but it has no chance of holding line. At least not yet, because later on, the I mean, on the left side, it's going to be a little bit different because he doesn't really see much transition since he's the lone lefty. That's what kind of killed him. But the right side, as the guys are throwing shots down the lane, you're going to start to see oil move down into that point, and then you'll start to see a little hold, a little push in the middle, and that's why you'll watch some of the angles change. But look at a difference between this shot and then the shot he struck with the one prior. Big difference. You can see this one gets pretty much to the gutter, right at about one and a half board. So makes a big difference on how much uh, room you have to play with. Now here's a shot that AJ strikes in. And you'll notice his angle, he's still playing it real steep, trying to get it to that gutter. But it gets there later, so it has a chance. It doesn't get there so early. 100%. Now, Grandin's playing him a little different. He's using the purple hammer straighter up the lane. But still, you can see how much friction there is. And then you've got EJ uh, a little bit later once the lanes have broken down a little bit, even deeper. But he's not throwing it directly at the gutter. Obviously, flat tens there. If he gets that a little bit further right, it strikes. And then you got Joe. Now, he gets away from the urethane. He doesn't throw it to the gutter either. Now, you got BJ. First shot. Throws his in the gutter because he's too steep. That was his first shot. And then he makes the adjustment. And you'll notice it's a little Fantastic. bit different. And it doesn't Drew nearly get to the gutter. So basically what you see on a pattern like Cheetah is there's built-in friction on 1-2. For the most part. If you get it to that spot early, it's going to overhook. It's going to see too much friction and hook. If you get it there too late, it's got a chance to go in the gutter if it hangs off of that spot. Uh, and if you get it in early in the matches, it was going to overhook. So there was a fine line. A lot of the times, the, the good play is to use urethane straighter like what Grandin did. And then once the lanes start to transition, you see the oil move down and it creates a little bit of hold there. That's when you move left with reactive because now you're trying to get it to read all that carry down. You see all the oil that gets carried down there and creates that hold at like the 3, 4, 5 range. 
um, you try to use that. You've got a couple of options there. You can go real steep and try to throw it at the gutter to get it to come through, or you try to find a ball that's going to read in that oil. But that's why these guys play those types of angles, because if they, you saw early, Buttruff got his to 4-5 and it just overhooked. Obviously, you can't do that early. There's just no way to get the ball there. You had to get the ball further right early on, otherwise you were in big trouble. And then later, you're able to move your feet further left and kind of tighten your angle up just a little bit and move your break point to like 3, 4, 5 rather than 1, 2, 3. Uh, you saw AJ struggled the entire time trying to get his ball to one, like basically the one board. If he got it there too fast, uh, it would fall in. And uh, if he didn't get it there quite early enough, it would never hook. So there was a fine line. If he got it there too late, it would probably pick up too quick and never get there and go through the face. If he got it there too early, it could pick up too quick and go through the face. So there's a fine line. It's got to be in between there somewhere when you're trying to play that angle on the fresh. You've got to have a real smooth bowling ball and something that's not going to overreact off of it. But then if you use something too smooth, your angle can't be too open because then you'll never get the ball to create the right angle to get through the pins. It's a lot harder than it seems, but when you do get it dialed in, you then find a ball that creates hold in and hook to the right. That pattern actually does get really easy. And that's why you see the scores get fairly high for these guys. These, the scores on this pattern, they're not going to be very high for your typical league bowlers because they don't understand. Because they're still trying to play up 10. They can't figure out why their ball is hooking so much and going Brooklyn. And then when they move their feet left, still trying to get it to 10, they still can't get it to the right side of the head pin because there's just too much hook. There's too much friction area in front of the head pin. So you got to get everything to move further right than 10 in order to even have a chance. And then when you get guys to try that, they're afraid of the gutter. They're afraid to be that close. They've never had to play that part of the part of the lane. They've never had to play straighter up the lane. So it's a little bit more difficult for the average league bowler. So keep this in mind the next time you're going to play a short pattern. These are sometimes the things you have to do. And then even like some of the cheetah patterns are even harder because they make it to where one, two doesn't hook at all. So you see more gutters on that pattern. And the scores are actually real low on that pattern. There was, there was a cheetah pattern they made where they made it to where the gutter didn't hook. And you so you had to play in. But the gutter was then like three, four, or five. And so you had to play even steeper angles with the same type of thing. But there was that much more hook in the middle of the lane. It just, it, it was impossible. It was crazy. So scores were minus on that pattern. It was nuts. But anyway, keep this in mind. I hope this helps you guys kind of understand the cheetah pattern just a little bit. Let me know in the comments below. And by the way, hey, uh, that book, make sure to get this book. Uh, I, got, I posted, a, there's going to be a link in the description, both of these books. I got the Approach a Book and then the Mental uh, the mental game book, that's going to be up there as well. So hit the link in the description straight off Amazon, get delivered straight to you if you want the hard copy or the paperback copy, uh, or it's an ebook and you get that directly to your computer, your phone, whatever, and you can read it on there. So appreciate the support there. Hit all those links in the description, sign up for the membership. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys later.